All right. So now we are moving on to the second part in this podcast, which will be a spoiler-free talk for each of Jordan Peele's films. Um, So you can get an idea of our thoughts on the film without getting it spoiled. So you can go check them out and not miss out on the magic. Definitely recommend checking them out. Yeah. We are going to start with discussing Get Out, which was released in 2017 and was um, written and directed by Jordan Peele, his directorial debut. Um, And the cast, I'm going to hope that I pronounce everything right here, but Daniel Kaluuya, Allison Williams, Bradley Whitford, Lakeith Stanfield and Catherine Keener all star in this eerie suspense thriller. Um, Can't forget about Lil Ray, R- Lil Rel Howery. You're right. You're Rod right. Williams. <laughs> <laughs> the best part of this movie. <laughs> so good. <laughs> um, he truly captures the the humor, and I feel like this is the peak of the balance of humor and horror. Because I, I feel like his moments are the funniest, mm-hmm. by far, in my opinion. Um, 100%. He, he's the comedy carrier in that entire 100%. movie. 100%. Um, Jordan Peele hired for his cinematographer, Toby Oliver, who had done the Dead to Me television series. Um, I think the cinematography in this movie is good, mm-hmm. but his cinematographer for his later films I feel like does a much better job yeah it's progression yeah so we'll yeah. we'll get to that um, later on but what was what I thought was really cool is that Michael Avels is the composer for all three of Jordan Peele's films and uh, when Jordan was trying to find a composer for Get Out he literally found this guy on YouTube nice <laughs> and hired him and he wanted to uh, wanted him to make a sound you've never heard of before and I, I feel like that's a pretty uh, pretty big thing to ask for. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> but the crazy thing is is that he did it. <laughs> I was listening I re-listened to the Get Out soundtrack and the Us uh, soundtrack, and especially the two main themes from the films that play at the beginning, they're definitely not anything I've ever heard before. And they're really good. Very iconic. Like you would would watch that trailer just to hear just hear those songs. Just hear those songs. Yeah. yeah. It's really impressive. For Get Out, the song is... I don't even know how to pronounce this. So it... He brings this, like, multi-culture sound to his... For this... For the soundtracks. Which I think is really nice. Um, yeah, I have... If you yeah, wanna, I see that. If you want to try to pronounce that, <laughs> pronounce that. The main title. The main title. Um, it's Out. a very hard <laughs> name. Um... But yeah, so that sounds really good. And then for us, the theme is titled Anthem. And that's the one that plays right at the beginning. And they're really good. Mm-hmm. So it's, it, he definitely hit the jackpot when he hired Michael Avels to do the music. Um, so I thought was really interesting is I actually found out that Get Out is based off of another film. It was inspired by a film called Guess Who is Coming to Dinner that came out in 1967 which was about an African-American meeting his girlfriend's white family, Hmm. which was revolutionary at the time. I did not know that. Yeah, so it was pretty interesting. At the time, it is a comedy, not a horror movie. I have As expected. It's a 60s film. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it was pretty interesting to find out that there's a movie kind of like it out out there that inspired it. So that's cool. Um, But the big thing to know for Get Out is what Jordan Peele wanted to achieve was the fear of being watched and being observed and I feel like that's you can definitely feel that in this movie of people just keeping your, like just watching everything you're doing even as an audience member like not even from character perspective from an outside perspective you yeah. can feel like glares and it's a really interesting like a, a fear that you wouldn't expect to be in a horror movie mm-hmm. um so yeah, so this is more spoiler reviews that I have in my notes. So let's just talk about what we thought of the movie. About Get Out. About um, Get Out. Get Out is one of my favorite films just ever. It's so good. It's a, <laughs> such a good movie. It's, for its suspense 
and horror aspects yeah, alone. Like, like, you wouldn't expect it either. Yeah. It, the, it gets so... The intense feeling you feel watching a movie like that is insane. Yes. And something that I didn't think about adding in the Crash Course part, but um, Jordan Peele doesn't like horror movies being set in creepy locations. He likes it being located in daylight and normal situations. Which is even crazier to think about. Yeah. Like, in such a... It's it's sunlight outside. It's yeah, day, it's, it's complete movie, daytime. The house looks nice. Everything's <laughs> clean. There's yeah. no blood. It's, just, it's literally a boyfriend meeting his girlfriend's parents and staying at the house. Yeah. That is the environment for this horror thriller. And I think that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, and that carries on into his other two films. But we'll get to that later. I think that all of the performances in performances in the movie are really good. All the actors and actresses kill their role. Kill their role, like, especially the lead, portraying oh, yes. Chris. Yes. Um, Daniel Kaluuya. Kaluuya. Phenomenal actor. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and it's nice that he is getting casted in more things. He starred in Black Panther, and he is in the new movie Nope. Yeah. Um, and he's done some other things, but he definitely should be used more. For sure. I mean, it definitely shows consistency for Jordan Peele. Like, he loves his act, his act, him as an actor, yeah. so why would he not continue yeah. to use him? So, like we were talking about in the Crash Course, there's a lot of symbolism in this movie to look out for. I'm not going... We're not going to spoil that. It's going to be in part three when we discuss the actual symbolism, but... This is a movie to pay attention to pretty much every frame. There's something going on, and there's a lot of detail that you'll miss the first time. It is a two. You have to watch this movie at least twice to understand a full, uh, like not even a full concept. I'll say a half concept. Yeah. To really get what's going on. Yes. Um. Big thing of Get Out is its focus on racism. Yes. And I think Jordan Peele did an excellent job of incorporating that into the movie where we... Because I, I, this was a really nice quote that he had um, when he was being interviewed. He said, a uh, very validating thing to see is an audience going in with their preconception of like what the movie was going to be about and stuff like that. And by the middle, they were all... Chris like we were in his shoes like whenever he was being judged or anything was being said to him like it felt like we were being attacked like we fully were behind Chris in all of his endeavors in this movie it happened so quick it's just an immediate 180 like yeah at every turn when it, you can see it happen and you wouldn't think like oh this is what where it's going but yeah. it goes there yes so he he did a really good job of bringing that and I think it's he, his main goal is to start the conversation yeah. of like really thinking about like what you may do in real life in your day to day life and I feel like um, there's obviously there's like it's a double meeting in this movie of certain things that some of the white people say to Chris mm -hmm. that is something that somebody could say just a normal conversation Right. And also mean what it means in the movie. Yeah. But it's just like something that, like, maybe you're not thinking you're being racist or being offensive, mm -hmm. but you are by right. saying certain things. Oh, for sure. Like, I feel it's like, like under its tone, it's like how you just speak on yeah. subjects and certain things like exactly. that. Exactly. Assuming that Chris would be interested in basketball or yeah. certain things like that, like, like he runs track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just just talk to him like a normal human being. Yeah, like <laughs> it's pretty much like what <laughs> is being said in this movie is like just have a normal conversation. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's pretty much it. And he does a really good job of doing that. Right. Um, I think it fully works, and I think anybody can enjoy this movie. Oh yeah, this is a good entrance. If you're looking into getting into horror, this is a very good yeah. starting point in general. There's so many horror movies out there, but this one movie will definitely it's a good launch point to find out what true niche you want to like. Yeah, because watch. it's not too scary. Yes. But it gives you 
it's an you get all aspects of a horror movie you would want but also not expect some avenues it takes yeah it's not like it's not like a super gory film nope. it's not super scary it's enough so anybody can watch it right so it's a, it's a great movie Get Out was nominated for 200 plus awards at different award ceremonies and stuff like that. Really? Yeah. And it won 151 of those awards, including nice. Best Original Screenplay for Jordan Peele. Nice. So, it's got the credit. Yeah. Um, it still deserves more. It definitely <laughs> deserves more. So, go out and watch this movie. I don't think it's streaming anywhere, but it's totally worth purchasing on Blu-ray or renting it. Give money to the people who worked on this really great movie. Support them so we can get more original films like this. I think you can rent it on Amazon, I believe. Yeah, so. Totally worth the $4 to rent. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> but uh, I say that we uh, we move on to his second film, Us, that was released in 2019. <clears throat> that also starred a really good cast of actors. Mm-hmm. Now... I'm definitely going to mispronounce our lead's <laughs> name. But uh, Lupita... <laughs> I'm going to hand this over to Ty's Lupita... here. Lupita... Nyong'o. Oh, yeah, her last name is difficult. Yeah, I watched a video explaining how to pronounce her name, but I forget. Yeah, I don't... A bit of a... I do not know, unfortunately. But, but the, yeah. she's a very well-known actress. She's, a big, she's also she, in... Uh, she, I know in 12 Years a Slave... Did she win the Oscar? She was definitely nominated for Best Supporting Actress. I don't remember mm. if she won an Oscar. I don't remember. Um, but she's been in some other big movies. She's also in Black, Black Panther. Panther. Um, and she's another actress that should be used more. Oh, yeah. Because she proves in this movie how great of an actress she is. And everybody else along with her. You got Winston Duke, Elizabeth Moss. You have uh, Yahya... Abdul Mateen II. He has a small role in this film, but he's a really good actor. He also is uh, the lead in the Candyman. Oh, yeah, film Candyman. Yeah. In 2021. Yep. So he got his leading role. He's a really good actor. He's also in Ambulance with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. Which was also a good movie. Surprisingly. I heard that was a good movie. It was yeah. good. Um. But uh, yeah, we also have uh, Shadai Wright Joseph. And Evan Alex, who portray the children in this film. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, a pretty cool, fun fact. Um, Elizabeth Moss's children are twin girls. Mm-hmm. And um, they um, played Emma on Friends. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> so after all that time, they come back um, <laughs> to be in this film. So that was, that was cool, because I feel like they probably haven't done too much. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty cool. Um, so the cinematographer in this film is Mike Jalaki or Jalakis. I've we got some weird names. Mike <laughs> Jalakis. I don't know. Well, he um, was the cinematographer for the movies It Follows, Under the Silver Lake, both directed by David Robert Mitchell. And he also did Old Glass and Split for M. Night Shyamalan. Oh, really? Yeah. So he has some pretty big credits, and I really love all of those movies. Yeah, Split was one of, that's definitely another really good movie. Fantastic movie. Yeah. And I love It Follows, one of my favorite horror mm-hmm. movies of all time. Um, so the jump in quality, cinematography wise, no offense to the other guy, but it was really, really good yeah. in this movie. I feel like every shot is really thought out. Mm-hmm. Um, it it just it's really pleasing to watch, and that adds to a well placed. Absolutely. Place. So the big thing with this movie, the reason um, us was created, uh, Jordan Peele grew up in New York City, and he said that he had this fear as a kid that he would go down in the subway, and across tracks he would see himself and he had this fear of having another version of himself in the same it's world. like an evil twin just an like. evil twin yeah. and that is where us comes in mm-hmm. i'm not going to specify too much of the plot i yeah. won't give away too much of the movie but that is where this movie came from that idea 
it's such a a, a very niche thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it's it's something that we've kind of we've seen movies like this before mm-hmm. but this movie is far different from any of them definitely 100%. Um, he's definitely super creative with what he does again there's a lot of symbolism in this movie there's a lot of hidden yes. details i couldn't believe it i've seen this movie <laughs> twice i caught a lot more the second time but then i watched some breakdowns and stuff yeah. like that and holy crap <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot for almost sure. everything means something <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah this movie i think suffers from trying to live up to get out mm-hmm. which is a shame because i think us is a really good movie it should be in its own rightful category. Yeah. It's just it it doesn't deserve to be compared to Get Out. It really shouldn't be at they're all. Not really they're not similar. on the same yeah, this they're on two different levels for what the kind of movies they are. Yeah. Um, because it's it's a really good movie. Mm-hmm. Um and it tackles a lot of big uh topics. Yes. Maybe not as much as Get Out does, but it does t- tackle a lot of stuff. Right. Um, which is important to a movie. Um, I think this movie was closer to a horror film than Get Out was. A hundred percent. This one's very much more. It has that more horror, horror aspect, feel to yes. it. And there's some some pretty intense sequences. It's definitely more violent. I feel like for mm-hmm. the most part. Um, so prepare for some blood, but. That's okay. It's not it's too a, much. It is welcomed. When you're going into a horror movie, you expect gore. Yeah. And so it's very natural. It, it happens. Yeah. But it's not too much. No, I it's not like over the people, top. Most people can handle yeah. it. And just like how Get Out was, uh, Winston Duke plays uh, Gabe, the husband, to our main character. And uh, he's kind of like Chris's best friend. Mm-hmm. He's the comedic relief. He has some pretty great moments of dialogue that are funny that break the tension Mm -hmm. so the movie isn't too intense throughout it kind of gets these nice chilled breaks that comedic relief that you need which is really important um, to these kinds of movies Um, so yeah so this movie it was nominated for 132 awards and it won 85 of them so not as much as Get Out and it, I don't think it it did not take home any Oscars. Yeah, I think that's why it shouldn't be. It's not. It should not be fairly compared to Get Out. Yeah, like, Get Out came out at a time it was like an icon, like an iconic thing. Yeah, and expecting something on that level is unfair for the sequel. All like one hundred flat out. One hundred percent. So yeah, go in with fresh eyes. Don't expect mm-hmm. anything. Um, just go in as almost. As if it's not like a blank sleep. Just pretend you didn't watch Get Out. Yeah. Just know that. Treat you it like a, any other director made it. Exactly. Um, anything else you want to say for us? Um, for movie? for this movie, um, it's still a very good movie, mm-hmm. for sure. Um, where Get Out is the middle of the road, this one's definitely more left of horror, which is which is perfectly fine. Which is good. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I appreciate it as well, but it, I don't appreciate it as much as Get Out for sure. It's definitely not like as groundbreaking yeah. as Get Out was, which is which is okay. Like yeah. it still stands not on every its own movie feet. has to break yeah. <laughs> into uh, what well, Get Out did. It definitely, it's definitely worth the watch for sure. Oh, it's definitely it's definitely worth watching at least twice. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is where we're gonna get to the big conversation. Um. Well, do we want to talk about Nope now, or do we want to move? Do we want to talk about Candyman or anything like that? Uh, we can jump or... into Nope. That's fresh in my mind. Let's talk about Nope. Yeah. The newest film, released in twenty twenty two. Yeah. Nope. Um, it uh, it stars once again, the man himself, Daniel Kaluuya, and it also stars Kiki Palmer. And. Uh, those are our two leads. We also have Stephen Young from uh, The Walking Dead, and he's done a lot of other things. Very good actor too. Yes, he gets powerhouses for these movies. Yeah, and... I, I'm blown away on how good of an actor he did. Mayhem for Shutter a couple years ago that mm-hmm. was really good. He did Minari, which was really good. I think that came out last year, and um, 
he was in this movie called The Burning, which is a South Korean film. That's a really good movie. And his performance in that is, is stellar. Yeah. So he deserves a lot of uh, credit for what he does, and I'm glad he got to uh, star in a Jordan Peele film. Um, so this film, when the trailer dropped, I was sitting in the movie theater, and I didn't know what it was, but it was just like this really simple shot, and it was like pretty much just like the horse, yeah. Daniel Kaluuya, standing there. The horse freaks out, and then you see the words by Jordan Peele and I was sold (laughs) I was going to the movies no matter what (laughs) everything else after that was just the the cherry on top Um, and I think the first trailer is really good because it's really mysterious and it doesn't reveal like anything it doesn't drop anything yeah it's it's such an open ended book of of a trailer that's what you need in a trailer that's what you need we need a trailer that gives you just enough to make you want to go see the movie but not reveal anything right so I would say watch a trailer for it. Don't watch any of the other trailers. Because ever since um, they released the second trailer and the third trailer, I've had to close my eyes every time I've gone to the theaters. Because I didn't want to know anything about this movie. I think it's just a general movie issue these days. Yeah. Tra- multiple trailers. It's yeah. Spoil too much of the movie. Want, I, I'm paying to go see the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already going. I don't need anything else to get me. There's so many movie. movies that suffered from that. Yeah. And I just never saw the movies because of it. Yeah. I feel like there was a trailer that played while we were there today that revealed too much. But I don't remember what movie it was. I'm not going to go see it now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never see it. No. Because um, I, I guess I did already. I know um, for me personally, it was um, the latest Jurassic Park movie. Mm. I have not seen that movie because of the trailers because I've saw too much well, of the movie. <laughs> you don't have to watch the movie. <laughs> I would I would tell you save your time and effort. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think for no specifically, I got spared because I did not see. I remember only seeing the first trailer. Mm. The second one, I remember the second one a little bit, but. It wasn't like sitting. It didn't sit in my mind. Okay, so that's good. So yeah, yeah. So it's it's best to go in this movie with as little as you know. Yes. I mean, pretty much what we've told you is all you need to know. Yeah, it's directed by Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele. You got a good cast of actors. That's it. <laughs> that's it. That's all you need to know. That's really all you need. Um, but I mean, it's still it's still a good movie. I feel like there, he still has the comedic relief mm-hmm. in this movie. I don't think there's as funny parts as his past two films. No. I don't think... There's some humorous parts, but not as much. Very subtle humor. Subtle humor, yeah. definitely. And then there's some scenes that are really intense, and then there's some things that kind of play out as just a normal movie. Yeah. There is some, like, a little drought feeling in between some scenes. Yeah. But then it just, like... Right back it picks up. right back up. So yeah, there's definitely some moments where like I stopped breathing for mm-hmm. several minutes. Oh yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then kind of just chilled <laughs> for, for like another twenty or so. Yeah. Um, so I mean, he's not. This movie's not topping the past two films. I feel like. No, I think this is his most niche movie so far. Yeah. It's chill. I mean, I'm definitely going to watch it again. Yeah, it's I enjoyed the experience. Yeah. I'm glad we It went. is a Jordan Peele movie. You have to watch it again. Yeah. Because you missed stuff. There's, the first there's so viewing. much we missed. Yeah. I know. Like, I just went on YouTube just to see, and, like, I was reading thumbnails, and it was, like, biblical references yeah. and stuff like that. Like, there's going to be a lot in this movie. All right. <laughs> um, so we're going to have to rewatch it, but I think for the most part, I mean, acting was good. The cinematography was good again. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't. I don't think I noticed that, like, one song that was, like, on the same level as, like, Get Out's theme and Us's theme. Mm -hmm. Um, But it still sounded good. Yeah, it was still... It was good for the movie itself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I feel like the biggest problem, I guess you could say, is pacing. I feel like there's... Definitely a pacing issue with this one, for sure. There's some slow... It doesn't throw it off to, like... It's not disorienting, yeah. but it's like, it is noticeable. Yeah. More like, I feel like Get Out, like, no 
break in any no like, break it's, whatsoever it's yeah. like you feel the eeriness like the entire time yeah once you're in the ear you're there like, yeah and then us there's some breaks but i feel like for the most part it's but it's thrill consistent. that the eerie is substituted with thrill yes yeah. and nope is kind of kind of going going around yeah it's a little it's a little swerve compared little to swerve. the other it two it feels like it was battling itself on what genre it was trying to be yeah i think so. especially towards the ending i felt like there were some music choices that kind of felt like i feel like this should be like intense music right now <laughs> yeah that, i also feel the same thing this is more so for i guess the spoiler talk but yeah we'll talk more about yeah. that kind of stuff but later. definitely definitely pacing a definite pacing yeah. issue noticeable. but it's still good still you good should see it there's i feel like there's some things in this movie i think should be put up there on like iconic sequences in mm-hmm. horror because I mean you got Get Out that has plenty of iconic sequences oh my god <laughs> and Us I feel like the character designs unforgettable yeah yeah. Like, we've never seen anything like it yep so they're gonna stand out in memory with the scissors yep. and the all red costumes um this movie I feel like it has that thing it has a few things that I feel like should, it has, should be... It definitely has niche things that it can stand out yeah. compared to those things. Yeah, there, there's a lot of things in this movie that I've never seen before. Yeah. It switched up things. It was really creative on its concept, which I feel like Jordan Peele does every time. No matter how you feel about the movie, the concept is always really good. Yes. The ideas are there. It's hard to say much more without getting yeah, spoilers yeah, we'll, for this one. We'll talk one. more in the spoiler section. Um, yeah. Real quick, any thoughts? Because it's not his directed movie, but we could talk about Candyman. Candyman. It's... You can notice where his suggestions are, I think. Yeah. For sure. It's been a long time since I've seen the original Candyman. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's hard to compare. It's The newer one is definitely... I, th- I think this is a generational gap. The newer one's definitely meant to be darker yeah. I guess and I think it works yeah and it does whereas just because of when the original Candyman came out it was more thrill like this yeah. one actually has a darker it hits tone. darker there's some pretty violent moments yes yeah. um I think the way that they manipulate the idea of the mirror reflection of Candyman mm-hmm. the camera work is really creative and I feel like this movie has some of the scariest movie moments in comparison to Peele's other movies. There's some pretty intense parts, um, and I'm one for gore, and I feel like this is definitely definitely the the most violent of his films. Uh, But one of my favorite things about it is I feel like with most horror sequels slash remakes is they kind of do rehashing of things. They don't really do too much it's a very fine line you have to be careful of treading and there's yeah. every horror movie has that issue of doing too much yeah, of it they don't want to they don't want to change it up too much but they don't want to do the same thing and I feel right. like this movie did a really good job of balancing mm-hmm. I feel like it feels like they stayed true to the mythos of Candyman but yeah. did their own thing and I think it worked really well and it, yeah it clicked um, so like I'm there for it the, the one thing that I appreciate about Jordan Peele movies is when he's referring to race and problems with racism and stuff like that he's really like he f- waves it in the st- weaves it into the story really smoothly where you know that's a part that's like pointing out racism but it's not being really upfront like mm-hmm. being preachy and I feel like Candyman has a couple things where I feel like it could have been more subtle I don't know if you agree or disagree with that take. For that portion, uh, I mean, at least for my own thoughts on it, I uh-huh. think it was it was enough for me to be like, okay, like this is mm-hmm. it's noticeable for sure. Yeah. And then sitting back and reflecting, was like, yeah, he, like he's got he makes some points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, for the most part, I think it's one of the best reboot sequels out there oh easily like, it's definitely it's, top it's really good top three for a reboot yeah. if anything if you want to call it a reboot slash remake yeah I definitely would watch a sequel if they were going to do it mm-hmm. um, that's such a fine line because there's Candyman sequels there, <laughs> the yes I haven't seen any of the sequels but I don't <laughs> think they get better <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's usually what happens with horror <laughs> 
Um, but uh, yeah. Anything else you want to say? Um, to not say? at the present moment without spoilers. I definitely the spoiler chat would be more so for this we have a lot my thoughts yeah so i think we should move on yeah so uh yeah thank you for listening to part two and stay tuned for part three our spoiler build um reviews